Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel, where we create photorealistic assets together. Today, we have a highly requested video for you guys. We are diving into Mari nodes. Unlike my other videos, this is a very beginner-oriented video. It's aimed towards people that never use Mari and people that never touched a node system before. But first things first, before we start all that, I want to thank everybody for the amazing support of the release of my first course. You guys are absolutely amazing and I will do my best to provide you as much information I can with my channel. For anyone who isn't aware of the course release yet, I will link it down below and you can use coupon code FIRST7 to get 30% off for the first week. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not working on any asset, but we are going to talk about Mari nodes. We are talking about all the basic things you need to know to start your project. There are some Mari nodes introduction video out there already. I don't think I have a lot of extra to add. What I can do is to explain things maybe in a different way to help you understand it better. Okay, let's jump into Mari. I created a complete blank Mari scene with absolutely nothing inside and in a node graph, all you have is the viewer, there's nothing else. The viewer is the way for you to see whatever is in your node graph in your viewport and you access it by press 1, which it says on top of the node. Let's create a diffuse map first so I can start to explain some of the basic functions. So we're going to channel and I'm going to name it diffuse. Just going to keep it 8-bit and go to color space because it's a color channel. I want to keep color space RGB, but I'm going to keep the mask data scalar. Let's press OK. Here are the basic four nodes we always see when we create a new channel. You have one of the nodes called diffuse because that represents the channel. And you have one merge node and the paint node connected to represent the first layer you create when you create a channel. Some people might be wondering when you open your node graph, it looks different than mine. That's because I chose my node graph to go vertically, but you can also choose your node graph to go horizontally. Go to edit and toggle point list. The shortcut for that is shift S and you should be able to change the direction of your node. This way, it looks a little bit more like shading network. Some people might be more comfortable with this. I like the vertical version better because it look much more simplified. We actually have the capability of customize it to function like Nuke nodes. And normally that's how I prefer to do it. To set it up, you go to edit preference, you go to node graph, and you see you have the selection of Nuke or Mari, and I always set it to Nuke. So that basically explains why my nodes look like this. Now I'm going to open the layer tab and explain to you next to the nodes and explain to you what each node means. So this is a merge node. It's colored differently because it's a special node that you're going to be using over and over and over again. You can create this node by press M. You can connect it to the node graph by moving it towards the connection. When you see the connection become yellow, it will connect automatically. You can see on the layer side, it creates a new layer, but it doesn't really say what that layer is. That is because you actually have to create another node to define what are you merging. So if I create another paint node and connect to it, right away you see that layer become a paint layer. You basically can change what this layer is anytime you want. You can delete the paint node and make this merge node something else. To create nodes, you press tab and then type the name of the node. So I'm creating a tile node. Once I connect the tile node to the merge node, you can see that my old merge node now become a tile node. To access the node property, you just have to double click it and you can see you can access the exact same properties as the layer. Let's put in a simple tileable texture. Every merge node comes with three connections. One is to connect it into the network. One is to connect it to another node to define the purpose of this merge node. And there's a third connection, which is a mask connection. So you always have the options to define which area you want this merge node to affect. 
If I link the mask connection to this completely black paint node, everything will disappear. To disable a node, all you have to do is to click on the node and press D. This is a great way to check what a node is doing to the entire graph. If you want to view everything in a node graph, you just have to select Diffuse, that's the channel, and press 1. Actually, you can view anything in this node graph on its own, just have to select it and press 1. I hope you understand at this point, any new elements you want to add to your asset, you need to start with a merge node. Let's talk a little bit about adjustment nodes, because these nodes do not need a merge node to be connected. Let's say I do not like that yellow color, I want to change to something else. So press tab and type HSV and move it towards the connection. When it becomes yellow, it will connect on its own. Then double click into the property. This is where you can change the color. Same goes for any other adjustment nodes, and you can add as many of them as you like. If I want to add a level node into that same connection, I can do so and adjust the level. So why are we all switching to nodes? Because it's very efficient. You can connect as many nodes as you like to different things. For example, let's say I really like this muted red color and I want to use it somewhere else besides inside of this connection, I can just connect another node to it. Maybe there's another location inside of this texture that I want to use it again, I can connect another node to it. You can do this over and over again without creating anything extra. Where in the layer system, if I want to reuse this muted red, I will have to copy all the layers and duplicate it into another area of the texture. We do have the sharing option, but it's definitely not as flexible as this. I'm going into my Buddha mask scene now to show you some of the most common things I use. The first thing I want to talk about is backdrops. It's a great way to keep everything organized. When you're working on the assets, you can have to connect many, many nodes where it gets pretty messy and out of hand. So backdrops are definitely super useful. To get it, press tab and type back and you will show up. I can expand this and put whatever node I want inside. And when I move the backdrop, everything inside will go with it. You can also name the backdrop by double clicking inside and change the names. Then you will see your new name in bold bright letter to clearly demonstrate what this backdrop is for. The next thing I want to talk about are radio nodes and the flexibility of the node system. I'm going to my backdrop for all my masks and you can see for each individual mask I actually have its own complex connection inside. So to avoid having this huge connection inside of my main graph where I'm using this mask, what I can do is to create the radio transmitter node and connect the receiver on the other side where I want to put this mask. To create a radio transmitter node, it's the same deal. Press tab and type radio. And it's this green blue color. And then we can go to the area where we want to use that connection and uh, create something that's called a radio node. Same idea, press tab and type radio. You should see a radio node and it's normally yellow. To connect them, right click on the radio node, go to MISC and uh, choose connect to transmitter. And then you can select the transmitter that you create that you want to connect to. I love this node and I know many, many artists that also love this node because if I had to connect all that mess into my main node graph, it's going to get really messy really fast, especially when I want to keep certain type of connection for the mask that I'm not ready to break them down yet. This way I can have as messy of a graph for my mask itself and not caring how it will affect let's say my diffuse map. Another great thing about this is that I can reuse that transmitter into other channels that I need the same mask for. If I create a mask for a paint, that means that mask is going to be used in diffuse, it's going to be used in bump, it's going to be used in roughness. So I can just create three different radio nodes in each of those channels and connect them to the same transmitter. 
In the old layer system, normally I will have to share the same mask into different、uh, channel. The node graph is definitely more optimized for those purposes. I want to show you the actual node graph I ended up with by working on this asset. As you can see, it's not too bad. When I first transition into nodes, I actually found this super easy. Of course,、um, it's best if you have some kind of node using experience from other program. But if you know Mari fairly well, I don't think it's very difficult to transition. I want to quickly go through my node graph in this scene, which I actually finished the real asset, to show you how little nodes I actually use to be able to finish an entire asset. And maybe explain a couple more that I missed. We're gonna use my diffuse as an example because this map is the base for every other map. First thing we have is the base merge node, and I used another merge node to merge the first layer of material, which is connected to a tile node. Another merge node to merge another material. Here I'm actually linking the same tileable texture into multiple of my merge nodes. I think you can kind of tell from the connection. All I did was putting a、uh, adjustment layer in between because they're basically the same material. They just need to be different color. So there's no need for me really to connect a new material for every merged layer. This is the efficiency of a node system. In the old layer way, I will have to duplicate the same maybe tileable node、uh, layer again and again with adjustment layer to have that different color. Let's keep going down the graph and see what kind of node I use so far. So you can see half of these nodes are merge nodes, and half of them are adjustment nodes, and a few actual textures. If you're going further down the graph, it's same thing: it's merge nodes everywhere, adjustment nodes, and of course we got radio nodes. That is connected to mask in a different graph, and that's pretty much all the nodes I use for diffuse. You can see how simple it actually is. This is why I believe by explaining the basic logic and just a few key nodes, you can start to work on your own project right now. You do have to start practicing the connections to be actually good at using the nodes, and that means start to work on something. That is everything for me today. I believe I gave you the basic knowledge and understanding to start work on something. And if you want to be good at using Mario Notes, you should just start using them. I hope this is a helpful tutorial. Again, thanks everyone for supporting my first course release. I also got a couple free guides for you guys. One is for photorealistic look. And another one is organic texturing workflow. So I will link them down below as well. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and I will see you in the next one.